Hello. I read a little s story this morning. It's a true history by Lucian. And I read it because of nonfiction November. He wrote uh, a true history. So this is an account that happened to him and he's telling it as truthfully as he can. And it's the story of Lucian and a group of mariners that set sail and have a series of extraordinary adventures. Um, and it's, it's totally true. Um, the first thing they come across as they're sailing is an, an island where all the rivers are wine and the the trees have grapes on them that when you bite into the grape it's full of wine in the rivers the fish are wine colored and when when they eat them when the crew eats the fish they get drunk and on this island there's uh, trees that are half tree half beautiful woman like Daphne and they talk to these tree creatures and they're very flirtatious and um, they offer their sexuality some of the crewmen um, uh, engage with the tree creatures and they find out afterwards that they can't disattach themselves and they turn into trees and leaves grow off of their fingertips and they escape from there and now they're back back on their ship and a huge gust of wind scoops them up and they fly off into the sky and they land on the moon and they meet a whole civilization of moon people that fly on vultures the size of elephants and gnats and flies the size of horses and the moon people are currently engaged in war with the sun people and so they fly over to the sun and they travel to different planets and they narrowly escape between the war between the moon and the sun and now they're back at the sea and it's calm for a few days and then a giant fish that's miles and miles long comes out of the ocean and in one gulp swallows the entire ship whole and inside the belly of the fish there's an island and there's all sorts of people that live on the island and there's ponds and uh, forests and uh, a, whole, a whole city of people that live inside of this fish and there's different tribes that they meet and they have battles so there's some people that the bottom halves of them are fish and then there's other reptile people and lizard people and crab people and they have to fight fight them all to secure their safety finally uh, Lucian and his crew members decide that they want to uh, escape and they decide to set fire to the forests in the fish and days go by and they can hear the fish moaning with pain and on the twelfth day the fish dies and they uh, prop up its mouth and they escape out of the dead fish and then from there they come across whole islands that civilizations groups of societies live on and they're able to sail these islands as if they were ships and so they come across an island battle between two islands that are floating around and they leave there and they come across an island of milk where the rivers are milk and uh, there's creatures, these human creatures that look just like people except their feet are made of cork and they can walk and run on, right on top of the ocean and they live on Cork Island and they come across uh, 
oysters the size of wagons. They, they uh, eventually they go to the land of the dead and they meet all of the famous people. And uh, Homer is there and Socrates and Achilles and Odysseus and Pythagoras. And they get to, uh, Lucian and the crew members get to interact with all of these famous people and they have events and discussions Finally, they go to a darker place of hell, and Lucian says, um, like, the darkest place of hell is for uh, the liars, people that tell things that are not true, and among them is Herodotus. There's a whole list of people, but Herodotus is one of them. And this, the story ends with Lucian uh, saying that we'll have to wait for another book. It's a, it's a little two-book um, story, and there's no third book. Obviously, it's a parody. Um, and at, at the time that he was writing it, he was poking fun at the supposed historian's um, and liter literature of the time that were posing these uh, fantastical tales and uh, mythological stories as if they were true. And what I think is so, it, what, what's such an interesting thing for me to think about is the distinction between some of the ancient literature and uh, more modern literature. like anything kind of after like the renaissance in that um, stories like you know homer's books ovid dante they would have these fantastic stories that are under the guise of truth that these are real things that happened no matter how fantastic whereas modern day literature um you'll have a fictional story and then you do everything you can to tell it as if the treatment the, the, the treatment of the story is realistic um, which is just something interesting to think about and this is a, also like a really early example of um, science fiction fantasy um, a precursor for um, some of like Voltaire's stories, um, Coleridge a little bit. There's, um, I imagine that he probably had read this uh, for the Rhyme the Ancient Mariner. Uh, Gull uh, Jonathan Swift with Gulliver's Travels, um, obviously Jules Verne. Um, there's a story of Jonah, which uh, I don't know what came first, but it's near, nearly identical, getting swallowed up by a fish. Um, so anyway, I just thought it'd be uh, a fun thing to read and kind of poke fun at nonfiction November. So uh, I read a true history. So this whole thing was true uh, by Lucian. He's a Greek writer. Um, so leave a comment if you'd like. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's a very enjoyable story, um, fun, great fun. Um, and thank you for watching.